Now the book says put the fuel to on and then remove the hose, tap the tank. And what I'm gonna do is do that and see if a bunch of fuel spills out. I put some rags down. Uh, normally I wouldn't suggest that, I don't think. I don't know why, maybe it's something with the vacuum system. It's not gonna pull, but we'll see. So I'm gonna have a long screwdriver here and I'm just gonna go ahead and just wiggle that to see. So there's no clamp, I'm gonna put a new clamp on there. Okay, and just doing it nice and gentle, kind of wiggling it, pushing it back, and there we go. It comes off. See all that crud? Somebody painted this, and they should not have painted this. That's a bad move. So we're going to have to clean that all up. Now we have another one to take off right here. That one does have a clamp on it, but I bet you it really doesn't do much. So I just have a long screwdriver here to get in. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of just wiggle that a little bit. There we go. To see. Okay. Pull that down, and that's off. So now I should be able to lift the tank up and I bet you that works off a vacuum so it's not going to pour unless there's a vacuum. Okay, so that could be a problem with bikes too. This petcock here is all kinds of messed up. That's going to be another project once we get the carb taken off. I'm going to take that all apart, clean that up, make sure all the O-rings, it probably needs new O-rings and stuff in there. But that's how you pull that off and we already got the thing unscrewed so now it's going to take it off. All right, so we're gonna lift the tank off now, and I believe there's still another hose, so we're gonna go gentle. We don't wanna just rip it right off. We just wanna kinda of pull it back. At least that's what I'm doing, and kinda of tilt it right here. So we still have another hose to tap here, and if I can, and it doesn't have, there's two of them. There's one on the right side, and there's one right here. So what I'm gonna do is really just kinda of Give it a pull, because there doesn't seem to be a clamp on it. There we go, that just came right off. These are the vacuum hoses and stuff, and the other one came right off as well in that process. So that's the tank removal. You have one, two, three, four hoses to take off. You want to set this somewhere out of the way, and then deal with that later on. All right, so one of the things I'm going to do before I go ahead and start to remove the carburetor and take them off is I could do it later, but I'll do it right now while it's on and up and vertical. I just stuck a old, went to the auto store, picked up some fuel hose, cut it up, put it on the bottom drain hose of the bowl here, and if I just turn the screw, it should flow anything in the bowl out if there's anything at all. I tried to run the bike a little dead before I parked it and started to this project, so there may not be... Anything that comes out, there may be. All right, there's some. I'm just running it into a empty jug here at the bottom. That's all that's going into. Okay, so it's not a great seal. Some's kind of leaking out, but. All right. So I'll do that on the other side as well. With these ones, the drain plug is on the right side, so you have to go all the way through with the screwdriver if you want to empty that bowl out or check your fuel, you know, if you're just looking at the quality of it. You can put that back in. And the next thing I'm going to do is just unscrew the brackets and we'll start to remove the hoses and see if we can't pull the carb off, take off the throttle cables and whatnot, and work from there. All right, so now I'm just gonna be loosening the screws up for the intake, and I removed this hose, it goes up to a T, and all these hoses, they feel a little rotted, so I'm gonna probably have to order 
a few of these hoses here just because it's probably time to replace them. It's been sitting for a while now, and once things sit for a little bit, they tend to dry rot. And you're really not going to know it unless you kind of get on it hard a little bit. And one day I was driving, my buddy and I were cruising across country, and we were pushing the car a little bit, seeing how, uh, how it would go. And next thing you know, we smell a bunch of antifreeze. And he's like, oh man, I smell antifreeze. He was driving. I said, well, pull it over. You know, we were, we were pushing the car pretty hard. And what happened was the heater core hose popped. It was the weakest point in the system, lucky for us. And the problem was it was about 820. We were in the middle of nowhere. And the closest town, well, I can't say the middle of nowhere. We were almost in the middle of nowhere. T town was 20 miles out. We were getting into uh, Cheyenne. So we called a tow truck. Because we could drive it, but then it would overheat, and we still had a couple states to go. So we get a tow truck, get to AutoZone right before they closed. They gave us a hose, and I put it in right in the parking lot, and off we went. But, you know, sometimes you're just revving it up or just cruising around. Gets a little pressure. Boom, next thing you know, you got a leak or something. And vacuum hoses, they can cause all kinds of problems. So those came off pretty easy. Okay. So this came off pretty easy. Now what people say they have trouble is, do we want to remove the air box just for the sake of getting it out of the way? Because that can peel back. So I'm going to take my flathead screwdriver and I'm going to just give it a little wiggle here. Okay, just give it a little wiggle. Okay, that's all. They say that can be a little bit of pain in the butt on these carburetors because now you got two of them. You're going to take them off together. And that comes off pretty easy. You know, you can get in there, just pop that off. You can roll that spring back. I don't want to break the spring. Hit the light right there. I'm just using a one screwdriver and just kind of working it. Some of this stuff has never been touched. So. What happens is it breaks the moment you want to do something with it. So I kind of just peeled that back. That'll ease putting that back on anyways. Now the cable for the car, for the choke is right here, right on top. And I'll readjust the camera. You can't see it's right up top. And we can take that off. Really might be able to just push it down. The best view I can give you while you're hanging out and watching. Hopefully you can be able to do this on your own or maybe you just like to check out how other people mess motorcycles up so you can say, hey, that's not how you do it. Well, that's how I'm doing it. So hopefully it works. So let's see if we can get in there and get that cable off. Cool. So if I give it some choke, I'm pushing back, I might be able to push that down far enough. Sometimes you can loosen it up. Let's see here, if I go up to the top choke, if I pull on it, that's going to make it shorter. If I push on it, you know, I want to maybe loosen it up. There we go. Put that all the way in. I'll adjust that again. Now I can push it. Look at that. It comes right up, right down. So what I'll do is push with one hand, screwdriver in the back with the other, and just kind of wiggle that cable out. Minimum tools as possible, because may, maybe you're on the road, you got to do something, and you don't have any tools. Now, minimum tools and working around the camera, it's a whole different ballgame. There we go. That would be the 
cable or the choke. But it's still on there. So you almost have to take the whole bracket off anyway. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Unless that's the bracket screw right there. That could be the bracket screw. Let's readjust and take a look. Okay, from top down, right here is the bracket that holds the choke cable. So I'm going to remove that screw. It's also one of the screws for the carburetors. So if I take that off, I should be able to get the carburetor choke cable out of the way. We can gentle here, just want to lift that nice and easy. Because I don't want to take this screw, back it out with my finger, and save it for later. Or I might just leave it in there. No, I'm going to be doing a lot of moving around, so. Okay. So that comes out like that. So there we go. All right, if you're thinking, how can I take off the throttle cable? This one here is going to require a nut, and there's a bracket. So we have the bracket right here. It's got a nut on the top and a nut on the bottom. In this case, I'm going to just loosen up the bottom nut and not really worry about the top nut at the moment. And that should allow me to free the cable up, and then I can push it down, and we'll get in there, and we'll see how that cable comes out of the pulley bracket that makes the throttle move the carburetor. All right, cool. So now we're going to take off the throttle cable and I'm looking at it going, okay, it's a nine, it's a 10 millimeter nut on this bar here, but to get underneath it, you know, there's, it's flush. So if you don't have a, a small crescent wrench or something, but you do have a 10 millimeter, you can take off the top one and then I'll still give you some wiggle room to move around once you get it loose. So it's pretty simple. You just kind of break it. Doesn't take too much force. I want to get it on there and just kind of. Once you get it loose, you should be able to use your fingers and just screw that all the way to the top. And that'll allow you to kind of pull it. And if it doesn't give you enough room to drop down, anyways, because that kind of just stops it. So if that's the case. And then what you can do is can you reach underneath and push because that pulls it up okay it's a double pulley system here the book doesn't really break it down to you and you know what? I don't even notice it so it's a a pull push pull so this here is coming back. This here is actually pulling it down. So that's what's going on with that. So what I want to do is same thing, 10 millimeter. I can readjust the camera so you can kind of see what I'm going to see. Because right now I have the light bar in the way. That's what is right here, the light. So we'll readjust. You can kind of see the bottom nut I'm talking about. And we've got to get to there and help move that. All right, so here's a little trick I want to show you. I just kind of was messing around with in here, and I kind of discovered if you pick up here, you know, you've got that little bit of wiggle room, and you turn to the left and drop it, you can almost unscrew this nut right here and get it low enough. To work it out so I'll show you I'm kind of just picking it up giving it a turn what's happening is this is staying and that's giving me more room to now I can get in there and take that cable off and then that will allow me to just go ahead and break free and pull that out that's the idea anyways or once we take the carbs out we'll be able to see that 
get to that. So now I'll do the same thing on the other side. Or I could just wait, get the carbs pulled out, and move it. That might be a better option. So here on the first cylinder, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did in cylinder number two, and just loosen up these screws here. And when you do it, I'm always looking to see if anything falls, I'm kind of just observing. My mind's usually also seeing, okay, well, what if I did this or did that? You know, start to problem solve inside your head. So if you've never done this before, just one step at a time, that's all. And the screw here in the bottom. Some big trucks passing by the garage. And that gets loose. Turn that back. Really loosen it up a little bit. Okay, so that's loose. Same thing with the springs. Just kind of roll those off. And get them out of the way. There we go. So essentially the carbs, as far as I can tell, is ready to pull off. And they say, from everybody what I've been reading, and that's pretty tricky. My instinct is I really just want to pull these out and get them out of the way, the air box. But, you know, that's not easy in itself because that's molded to the bike as well. So the air box looks like it probably has to come forward to come out. So let's go ahead and work on getting the carbs out from the bike. So for this, I'm going to have to stay on a wider shot. I'm not going to be able to get too up close. But I will show you and explain to you a little bit what I'm doing. I'm feeling around with the flathead screwdriver on where I might be able to use and separate, use some force or leverage and separate the rubber hoses, you know, the intake hoses from the carburetors. Now I have cooling pipe right here and got the boot in the back here for this. So if we go in with the boot, and it's, it's dirty, and I don't want to get too much dirt around, but it's going to happen. That's what I hear. I'm cleaning it all up and get in there and clean that when I do it. So if I just lightly press here, get the screwdriver to go in. I don't know. I've never taken these off, and everybody says it's a real pain. So I'll just take their word for it. And that's why I like to back these out as much as I can, because it gives me room to pry. A lot of people say, oh, they're already loose. No, no, no. It's like putting on a pair of boots. Your foot can go in halfway. But unless those bottom laces are on or loosened up, your foot's not going to go in all the way. So I don't want to drop those nuts, but I will make sure these are all the way backed out. I've taken off single carburetors before, you know, in lawnmowers, small motorcycles and stuff. But not a dual set where you have to kind of work them in tandem, then again, by themselves. Coming off is usually a little bit easier than putting back on. So we'll see what is going on here. So just kind of feeling around on the seal. Don't want to rip it or nothing, but I do want to see where they might go. I can push down. If I can drop one side or drop the other, I'm gonna wait till I take the cable off until I'm clear with that. Everything's clear underneath. I just have my vacuum hose, which is out of the way. If I can push the boot for the air box out of the way. That's that's pretty soft rubber right there. Push that with my finger, just in. That's all I'm doing, just pushing it in, pinching it essentially. Kind of like I'm making a funny face. And that allows me to. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to push in with my finger, it pushes right in. No problem there. But will it give me enough room to allow me to move it off? So I'm just going to push down at the same time. Just 
pushing down. That's all. Pulling up a little bit. A little left and right. Or right and left. Using a good a bit of force here. And I said if it's gonna come off hard, it's gonna come off, or it's gonna be put on even harder. I'm pushing, 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 and then turning, 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 right? <laughs> it stands on the middle stand, so you can see there the bike tilt a little bit. That's how much I was pushing on it. Fish! So what I'm going to do is kind of work it. <clears throat> Just a little bit. Move my light over top so I can see a little bit. Straighten that. I got the handlebars to the left. And there goes the light. Just kind of getting things situated. Once I get past these boots, there's probably a nice little trick to this. Really, I think it's all in the all in the back boot here. So if I pull up as far as I can. You know, you really wish you could take the boxes out. That's just not the case. Here you go. You go twist right. And then pull up maybe. Okay. So the right, this left side's out. Somewhat. <clears throat> I'm just giving a tug on the bottom. And simultaneously working the other side. All right. So I can do here. Just pushing, working that boot a little bit here. There we go. And free it up. Push down. Okay. Don't want to get grimy fingers in there, but. So now I'm free. On this side, essentially, if I, as long as I avoid putting it in there, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to let it come out. Okay, it looks like my vacuum hose is in the way a little bit. There we go. So now they're out of the boot. Okay, they're out of the boot. A lot of varnish on the intake. That intake is not clean. And they're out of the boot. I am down and clear the intakes. Let's 
so now I just want to work them my way. <clears throat> okay. Nothing's really stopping me. I can take apart. Pushing them all the way down to clear the intake. Okay, that should give me some wiggle room to go forward. All right, go forward with them. <laughs> they say it's a pain. So just expect it. So now I kind of hung up here. I wonder if I could if I push this way. <clears throat> if you remove that, that's gonna have to come off anyway. That give me some more room to work with. And I'm kind of winging this here. What I'm doing is just trying to create a space where I can clear it even better. That's all. It look like that at all. That is nasty. I don't think it should look like that. We'll take a look over it in a little bit here. But now I got some more room to work with. Okay. So now I'm just going to be pulling my way until I get somewhere that loosens up a little bit. <clears throat> a little tug and pull. Tug and pull. I'm going the other side, push it through. Now to come out. I'm not really getting bound up on anything, it's just kind of tight around some of the rubber seals. And so, so I guess the rubber seals. is kind of holding me up.
Push. Push. <laughs> okay, I wonder if I can take off this vacuum mode here. That might help. Yeah, it's gonna help a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and route this vacuum hose from the bottom to the top of the air box. That might help slip it out. Okay, so like before, I'm just moved to clip off this big air hose, vacuum hose, and and give you a little. So once I get that out of my way, that might help alleviate some of that pressure taking the carb out. That just kind of backs off. Okay. I'll go to the other side, push it through, or at least move it where it needs to be. Snake is long. The book doesn't give you any steps take out the carbs and I can read it just says when you take the carbs out to clean them blah 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 and everybody online just says yeah it's tough well sometimes you just don't know what you're gonna get into There's a, sometimes things are pointing at you right in the face You're wondering, how the hell? Anybody engineer stupid shit like this? And then you're like, oh, there we go. Still, this big air hose here. Is a factor as well. Really, there's not much holding it in, except the motor and the air box wedged between two really tight spaces. Okay. Some vacuum hoses. You just wonder why. Take a look at the viewfinder here, what's going on with that? Try to give you a good view, but I don't want to bump the camera too much. <clears throat> okay. So, breather tube, take that off. I got a foot on the frame. I'm really just pushing through. But I might have to really get underneath that and pull that hose out. Try not to, you know, it's, sometimes you just gotta give it a little muscle. Other times you gotta put drastic measures. And pop that hose off. 
or pull it the other way out. Okay. So that clip is on the bottom. Long screwdrivers, really. Nice. Okay, well that's out of the way. Let's see what else. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Take the big fucking hose off. Take the. <laughs> All right, cool. Fair enough. Let's get a 10 milli. And we want to get this throttle cable off now that we are down here. So, carbs out. <laughs> Take that big. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at that. Look how dirty that shit is. Okay. So, anyways, we're going to go ahead and work on getting that all cleaned up outside, inside. Now I got to get this throttle cable off. So, I'm going to flip it around. Let it cook up a robot. See what we can. Do okay, boom that and twist, and now the back side that's the return. Okay, so that's going down to the front of the motor, and if I push here, and I my 10 millimeter wrench when I put that thing right here. Okay, 10 millimeter wrench. It's going all the way to the top. So that pushes down. Same little trick. Okay, it's gonna come unscrewed just a little bit. And this is a little backwards. So, seeing if I can keep him focused, huh? Not really looking at the camera too much, but here we have the thing, and I'm just trying to get it to pop down so I can slide it out sideways get my screwdriver And I'm gonna go ahead and oh, the insides. <laughs> the three ways clean, somewhat. Mm. That's good. Might need a little slight adjustment on the balance, but who knows? Yeah, anyways. Okay, so. Main throttle part here is what we're working on. I'm gonna go ahead and get flathead. Mm -hmm. 
because I want to push that out. There we go. Main throttle is next to the choke. And now we have ourselves a nice dirty carb to clean up. Would you look at that? Got all these nice caps on here, the emission caps. Everybody's like, oh, take them off. I said, take them off, clean them. That's what we're gonna do. Plug these holes up too here in the intake. 